Hello, you're listening to Reviewing History, your comedy history podcast. I'm filmmaker and teacher Brian Rupert, joined here by... As always, Steve Bagliak. And... Hey, what's up, you fucking twazil? <laughs> oh, whoa. <laughs> Who's that? Ant? Ant G? Ant G, yo. Wow. Very aggressive. <laughs> How long were you holding that in? <laughs> he wrote that in his notebook yesterday. What is that, by the way? What did you call me? It was, I think it's a whore. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll accept that. Or a Jeez. cunt, something Jesus. like that. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking booyah. <Yeah. laughs> we're here, guys, though. It's December. We're here because we're here. Oh, wow. December, we made it. We made yeah, it. It's yeah. Christmas season. Yeah. You, you only have to bring up the Christmas album like three more episodes. Oh my god! Thank God. Are you in the holiday spirits? I am. I'm very excited. You look. You're in the American spirits. Today. That's the holiday. You're spirit. very. Uh, Nothing's more American than Christmas. It's not Fourth of July. <laughs> you have a Kiss shirt for every episode, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I have two. <laughs> I just wore them the past two times. <clears throat> What's your favorite yeah. Kiss album? Everyone has one. Even Kiss fans. Even uh, rock and roll over. Fuck you. It's Creatures of the Night. Creatures of the Night is great. It's top five. I've been re-listening to all the albums ranking them. I know. How's that going? I just finished uh, Revenge, but I haven't I haven't listed it so yet. You're almost done. I'm, I'm, I'm you approaching the, home the stretch. Yeah. That's probably considered torture in most countries. No, it's great. You don't like Kiss? Not enough to re-listen to every album and rank them. Mm. You know, it's uh, you hear one or two albums, that's enough. You don't need everything. <laughs> Nah, it's that's great. not enough. All we gotta do is just smash his thrashes and hits. Yeah. Never oh, yeah. Yeah. That'll do it. Smash his thrashes. You know and what hits. album that is? Never enough. Yeah, I believe that is Sonic Boom. It is. Good job. Thank you. Do you love Sonic Boom because it starts with Sonic and you're a Sonic true fan? Yeah, I think of Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. Mm. That should have been the cover. <laughs> Sonic and Kiss makeup. Oh, <laughs> that would have been great. <laughs> And then you you could introduce Chris Chan into the fucking yeah. sl- into the, the world of Kiss. Kiss. That's a dark world. Kiss, yeah. Kiss Chan. <laughs> Kiss that Chan. World, <laughs> that world got dark real fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gino Samuel. Check him out, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so but you know, uh, first order of business on Bandcamp.com. The mm-hmm. reviewing history Christmas album is up. Half the money goes to St. Jude's. You know, check mm-hmm. it out. Yeah. You know charity, the deal at this you know? point. We've mentioned it again and again and yeah. again. Half the money goes to St. Jude. Go buy Bandcamp, it. ReviewingHistory.com. This ain't no whack Christmas on Bandcamp. Yeah. Check it out. If you haven't bought it, fuck yeah, it. Yeah, buy it. You yeah. support cancer, I think it's safe to say. Yeah, right. Yeah. You're right. a cancer right. fan. Right. You're pro-cancer. And I yes. think, like, you don't even have to listen to it. Just, mm-hmm. you know, donate. Yeah. That's all. That's to, us, the, that's, to us and St. Jude. <laughs> that's the ultimatum. <laughs> yeah. So either yeah. you buy this or you love cancer. It we costs a, the same amount as this. We need a picture of Aunt G holding a child that says, buy this album or we give this kid cancer. I have a syringe? Yeah. <laughs> cancer and a syringe. <laughs> cancer and juice. Yeah. Carcinogens. Yeah, no, straight national it's, it's filled with nicotine you. smoke. <laughs> he has the lungs of an 80-year-old smoker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's let's dive into some emails. Emails, okay. oh, right yeah, bat. we've been yeah. getting some uh, some interaction. This is from Seth, who uh, wrote us emails last time. Hi, Seth. Uh, he again. said, "Hey guys, thanks for reading my email on the show, and we're doing it again." Mm. For the record, I still love the movie for version the of record. Master and Commander. It's still awesome with some really kick-ass action, and it seems pretty accurate. Mm-hmm. But after reading the books, it just didn't. I just didn't like some of the changes they made to the characters. It's Captain fu- Aubrey. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. The doctor is supposed to be this short, fugly, ill tempered dude and an oh, expert. They, they made him a dream boat. Yeah. 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 But in this movie, we get this six foot one, suave, handsome guy who probably slayed a lot of 19th century ass. <laughs> so I found that funny. Yeah. That is a change. Like, they're like, we can't yeah. have just an ugly, ugly repug- people aren't allowed in Hollywood films. No. Like, no. Danny never. DeVito was the last guy that they let be ugly on film. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Didn't didn't like somebody find a shrine of Danny DeVito recently? Like they were renovating a high school. What? Yeah, like my wife told me about this. There was a re- it was a high school renovation and they were taking out like lockers and shit like that. They removed the locker and the locker had a shrine of Danny DeVito like behind it for like years. Like, like Hey Arnold? Yeah. <laughs> Only it was Danny DeVito. Wow. That's actually yeah. awesome. It's just, I, I find that hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> That's someone who knew what they were doing. Oh, of course. Remember in Cuckoo's Nest when he's at Martini and they're playing basketball and he takes the bet, like he gets past the basketball and he just throws it against the fence. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's his big Great play. scene. <laughs> Got a nickel. <laughs> and this is also from Seth. Hopefully my second email didn't make me seem like too much of a bitter douche. I don't remember what it was. I mean, I am, but I won't, don't want to come across that way. I think it was the National Lampoon one. Oh, I mean, we're bitter too. We're all bitter so, and douches. Yeah. Yes. So you're you're in good company. Yes. yes. Welcome. Flash company. Welcome to the circle. <laughs> Right. Circle of douches. This, ne- yeah. this next email um, is kind of a sore subject. Oh, really? Yeah. For whom? Uh, this is we got this last week and then I answered and the person answered again last night. Oh, OK. So this is from William Mumphrey, which I'm convinced is a reference to Seinfeld. William Mumphrey. Somebody's reading too many Billy Mumphrey stories. <laughs> Do you remember that? No. Yeah. <laughs> that, it sounds like Kramer, though. You're doing Kramer. I uh, know. I was doing Peterman. Oh, yeah. Okay. well, he's got Kramer's story. So, yeah, he does. Mm. All right. So uh, this is from Billy Mumphrey, William Mumphrey. Hey, guys, I am a longtime listener. Having found the podcast through a mention on TESD, it pains me to have to pen this missive, but it must be done. Ooh, a missive. Yeah. No ass kissing ahead. Oh, we'd have it no other way. Yep. (laughs) I've just finished listening to episode 78, the latest pick episode. Yeah. Okay. And I've noticed a disturbing downward trend in the quality of what was once an outstanding history podcast. Is this hate mail? With the obvious exception of Rupert's continued butchering of proper pronoun of proper nouns. He doesn't like your diction? Well, I don't think anyone likes I don't like my diction. I get that. Right. But he feels like we've gone downhill. We lost uh, our fastball. Oh, no. Yeah. We had a fastball? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always thought we were junk ball pitchers. Yeah. We're knuckleballers. But, um, like Tim Wakefield. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Can you name another knuckle? No. Okay. I'm impressed he got one. He just died too, re- not what? too recently. What? Yeah, they got recently. Tim? Yeah, he had like a brain brain cancer. Dominici just That's died. Sad. Yeah, people didn't buy our Christmas album. <laughs> You could have saved Tim Wakefield, you piece of shit. (laughs) Look what you've done. Uh, But he says, being a big fan of history, the Mm -hmm. pod sounded like it would be right up my alley. Uh And it was. It was. For a little while. I added the little while, but he said Uh, for a while. mm -hmm. Okay. But maybe in the past six months or so, things have gone off the rails often, making some episodes unlistenable. Mm -hmm. Unlistenable? Yeah. Which ones? I'm curious. Yeah, They left me feeling lightheaded. As if I inhaled the mist from ex- an exterminator's bug bomb. I think he's being a bit the, so that bug <laughs> <laughs> So that, that bug bomb thing is a Seinfeld re- uh, reference from the same Billy Mumphrey thing. Where it, Kramer is reading the manuscript uh-huh. in the... Bug- so he's, he's doing the bit. He's doing the bit. He's doing the bit, but there's but, enough here where it's not the bit completely. But he's doing the bit. Is this a joke? No, I think, I think he's serious. <laughs> But he's doing the bit. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. How could you? On, how could you on, hate on. us but do our okay, own hold bit? On, to hold us? on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, before you continue, let's just see where we're at with this hate mail. Okay. We've got a gentleman who yes. liked the show, who's named after a Seinfeld. He reference. liked that it was about history. Yes. And he feels that it's gone off the rails. Yes. Now, what does that mean exactly? I think a lot of our episodes, especially that pick episode, because we were answering so many emails. That we, we, covered, weren't, we weren't talking about enough history. We covered a wide area of topics in that episode. Is he just talking about pick episodes or general episodes? Uh, he said six months worth. Yeah. So everything. Does he mean we're joking around too much? Well, I, I end up. that's the show. I end up asking him. <laughs> is, he the, <laughs> is he the guy that said 33% less Brian? <laughs> no, no I don't, it could be him. I don't know who said that. Someone recently on the Spotify said, uh, Brian is my favorite, and that made me happy. Oh, good! <laughs> Finally, <laughs> that's great. Yeah, it took long You're enough. <laughs> the people who like you really have. A what lot does he to not say. like? Yeah, I, I end up asking him. Continue. So, um, so that uh, made me feel lightheaded as if I inhaled the mist from an exterminator's bug bomb. So that's a Seinfeld joke. Yes. Okay. What was once a ripe peach has now become a mushy, two-week-old version of its former glorious self. Again, that's another that's Seinfeld. Another Seinfeld. The right. Mackinac peaches. This is a joke. He's doing he's good. Serious. He's doing I good. I think he's serious and he's working. And he's in the working rest. in Seinfeld. Yeah. Okay. Um, and he said, all this said, I will not give up on the podcast. 
I so I hate you, but I'm going to keep listening. Now, this is the most believable thing ever. If you've ever looked at any podcast, yeah. Twitter, it means we made it. Because when you look at any podcast, Reddit, it's always people who hate the show <laughs> with a burning fucking passion and listen, listen to everyone. Well, we episode. have a Reddit now, so I guess that's our future. Yes, that's coming our way. Yeah, that's when I will stop going. Going where? To our Reddit. Oh, right oh. now it's a lovely place. I haven't seen it. Us. I don't have the app, so it doesn't let me view it on my phone. Oh, really? Yeah. Just every time I click on, on a link, it's like you need to download the app, and I don't do that. Okay, yeah. I hear. So you. I have not seen the Reddit. <laughs> but um, regardless, it's a it's a nice place. I was talking to some people about different stuff. That's good. But sure. you know, eventually, if we get big enough, it will just be filled people with people who hate. It'll us. turn into yeah. a cesspool. Well, that's like what happened to Opie and Anthony. I know that. It's happened it, to tell it got Steve real evil to everyone, over there. Yeah, it happens to everyone. Huh. Oh, tell him Steve Dave get hate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like, I don't know why people listen to the show based on how they act. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the most believable thing. I hate what you've done the past. But, I'm gonna keep keep, but I'll be here. I'll yeah. be here. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for listening, sir. I guess. I, <laughs> hopefully we can turn it around for you. And he said, um, <laughs> all of a sudden, I will not give up on the podcast. I believe you guys are capable of turning the ship around. Okay. I have faith in you guys, but that's just me. I'm something of a cockeyed optimist. That's another Seinfeld thing. Yes. Okay. You, you, you're misplacing your faith. Um, <laughs> and wait, so let me- I don't, I don't get what his issue is. If it's that there's too many jokes, you're listening to the wrong fucking show. I mean- <laughs> that's It's a comedy. Comedy history. history. Right, right yeah. in episode zero, we, we laid it all out. Like, we're here to have a good time. The history thing, as much as I love it, it's kind of just the- it's a, just an excuse for us to gather, get together and chat. It's, yeah. the, it's, yeah. the, <laughs> it's the mechanism to hang jokes on. Right. And, and we like movies. But on top of that, I don't think we've ever slacked on the history for the most no, part. No, I like, think the show really. has been consistent in what we've done. Is his problem the guests? Like, we have a lot maybe, of guests the last the guests. six maybe months. Sorry. Oh, you asked. Why are we speculating? You yeah, asked. So, yeah, keep going. I'm sorry. And he answered. So he also said, P.S. Perceivers suck. Fuck yeah. In fact, naming listeners of a podcast sucks in general. Yeah, no kidding. This guy's good. It's a good angle. But that's the... <laughs> wait, wait. Does he not understand? Like, if you don't know, get the irony of that, I don't know what to tell pompous you. It's pompous and dumb. Yeah. That's yes. the point. Yeah. yeah. No one actually thinks perceivers is a good thing. In fact, I've never said it. I've never referred to them as perceivers because it's too embarrassing. I do. You love it's it. terrible. Right. Yeah, you love it. But I love shit like that. Yeah, but yeah. like, how do you not get Well, that? that's your role. You know, you... <laughs> like, he's not <laughs> dropping truth bombs on us and saying, because he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> we messed up, guys. <laughs> we named our fans incorrectly. <laughs> and they named themselves, didn't they? Yeah. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> All right. So then he goes, um, PPS, how about reviewing a real Irish history movie? One with <laughs> real Irish actors instead of Americans doing terrible Irish accents. Oh, it's you, the angry Irish you, guy. <laughs> you think it's him under a pen name? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, angry Irish guy. You leave Tom Cruise alone. <laughs> I like this guy. He's a saint. He's been he's been breaking up balls for like a year now. Yeah. <laughs> I think he did it. He did it. He All pulled right. it off. So I wrote back. Okay. I will read my response. Uh, I said, "Hey man, it's Brian." <laughs> hey man, <laughs> is it supposed to be read that aggressively? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Is that the professional way to denote someone? Hey, man, not hey, Will or <laughs> Bill. Hey, man. Hey, man. I, don't, I can't even refer to your name. <laughs> I said, I take your criticism very seriously. No, you don't. I, do. <laughs> I was freaked out when I got the email. I was like in a panic. Why? There's Seinfeld have references. We, have we lost our, our fastball? Like, do we suck now? Like, that's what I'm wondering. Because one guy told you you suck finally? <laughs> that's all it takes. This should have happened day one. I'm shocked it took this long. <laughs> if, if it was, no, the fact it that- It took like a thousand people to find one. So the difference is, if it was just someone saying we suck and they don't like the show, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But it's someone saying, I used to like it and right. I don't anymore. So I want you to- You want to know why? why. Okay. So I said, right. we want to give you the best podcast we can give you. I believed we were getting stronger, but if someone does not feel we are providing them with the entertainment they deserve, I want to know why. What do you believe is the specific reason for this change? I don't believe we are doing it. <laughs> right, it's demanding it. Yeah. I, think the, I think you're actually doing the problem now. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, when you email, this is what happens. very meta. Yeah. So I said, I don't believe we are doing anything differently, but I am willing to hear what you believe to be the problem. 
I appreciate you reaching out about the perceived lack of quality you're getting from Ooh, the show you said now. Perceive. Yeah. Uh, Ooh. In there. I will in do there. my absolute best to make sure our next recording is the best it can be. So you're, we got to really try our best today. Yeah, you're okay. A, you're doing a bang well, up job so far. <laughs> hopefully he gives us some advice we can yeah. follow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Again, thank you for reaching out. I truly appreciate it. I will be, re I will be reading your email out on the next episode. And we're going to review which will set it. Set up uh. the Christmas episodes. And I said, also, Perceiver Sucking as a name is a feature, not a bug. Yeah. <laughs> and I told him I was actually thinking of doing Michael Collins soon. Okay. And he answered me back yesterday. What did he say? He Sweet. said, hey, Brian. Well, I guess I've been feeling like the pod was straying from the history aspect and seemed to focus more on the filmmaking, acting, and script. But on reflection, I guess you guys have no. time to fill. And if you spoke strictly about the history, the episodes would be over quickly. Correct. So yeah. maybe I overreacted. Maybe. Wait, so he doesn't like that we talk about movies? Well, I don't a, know. I mean, we it's a mix of history and filmmaking because... The show, is about says, about I'm filmmaker. the show is about me <laughs> reviewing movies. Yeah. Now they happen to be history movies. Yeah. I think it's, but it's a, we blend it's, the two. Yeah. It's, a, it's a movie review show. <laughs> what the fuck? They're talking about a movie again? It's the third time this month, sir. You know you're a psychopath, right? <laughs> Maybe he's sobered up and then sent for the set. <laughs> yeah, well, he is an Irish, he's Irish guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, maybe I was a little harsh on the boys. <laughs> Every oh, other, I guess I was too harsh on the boys. <laughs> okay. I right. love this guy. <laughs> um, so maybe I overreacted. And it was right after the pick episode, which was a shit show. And not shit show. And not strictly a history review. Well, it never is. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pick episode. So yeah, I might have overreacted. I realize you're not reviewing doc documentaries. Not yet. All right. Okay. He, yeah. You've come to your senses. I, <laughs> and then this is what he said. I'd liken the pod to more of a Michael Moore version of a podcast. P.S. Uh, fuck him. Why do you want to insult us? <laughs> <laughs> that hurt. That hurt. <laughs> <laughs> so then he said I do love this guy yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so then he said I'm watching the Joan of Arc episode yeah. and I'll say I'm digging the amount of history in it okay especially especially since I've not seen the movie but mm -hmm. will after watching the episode that's happened with quite a few movies you guys have done. Oh, all right. By the way, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> he was, you know what it is? He we we spent that that he pick episode. Pick episodes. That pick episode we spent like two hours talking yeah. about just nonsense, yeah. football and metal well, you and know shit. What? We yeah. still and it just wasn't his bag. I I, I get that. I, yeah, yeah, I understand. I it's one that. episode, but I added up the amount of time of history. And you did 20 minutes on the Pequot where I did 10 minutes yeah, about and Steve did, did 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like there was still an hour of history. <laughs> All right. You know, I mean, yeah, but it was, it was at the end. It was at the end. He had yeah. to get through a, yeah, yeah, yeah. an hour of sludge. I get it. Yeah. Before he could get to that. I will say on YouTube, for the pick episodes, I do put the uh, chapters. Oh, do you? Oh, yeah. nice, nice. Yeah. But anyway, so he said, by the way, regarding the Catherine McCormick comments during the Shadow of the Vampire episode, mm -hmm. you got to check her out in Dangerous Beauty. Wow. What a beautiful woman. Never really saw how pretty she was how in Braveheart. This, how does this guy Dude, like just yeah? He he, you know, he comes in with that first email and I hate him. Yeah, and now I love him. <laughs> like he wants to talk about tits. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, she's gorgeous. She's beautiful. Yeah. And he goes, and what a rack. Yeah. And then he said, so don't go blowing an Achilles over my email. We already did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was was basically born of frustration and maybe I overreacted a bit. He didn't like one episode. Yeah. I get that. That's fine. That's you don't funny. Like yeah. them all. It's funny. It's funny. I <laughs> demand that they all are liked yeah. and loved. Yeah, yeah, I want uh, when someone's asked what oh their boy. favorite. Well, they can, like they, all of them. They cannot be Ricardo Vasquez. <laughs> <laughs> if only. <laughs> I'll take 10 Ricardos any day. I <laughs> would, 10, I, if, I, if I had like 15 guys like Ricardo Vasquez, I could take over the world. <laughs> you know, we'll get together and me and him are going to storm the fucking capital. We're going to storm the capital together. We're going to burn everyone in it alive and then seize control of the White House. <laughs> Next episode, he's not here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the CIA is already arrested. Yeah. Yeah. Vasquez, I'm sorry if they get you too. 
<laughs> yeah, where's Vasquez been? <laughs> All right, so you said, by the way, if you're going to do the Collins movie, I would recommend a couple documentaries that will give you much better insight into a guy who is fairly divisive in Ireland's fight to rid itself of the old British. <laughs> Those documentaries would be Hang Up Your Brightest Colors, mm -hmm. which covers his entire history, Sounds and cool. The Shadow of Beale Na Blath, which centers around- There's no way that's how you pronounce it. There's no way that's how you pronounce that. Okay. Say that one more time. The Shadow of- He's going to send you anthrax in his next <laughs> email after <laughs> hearing you say that. Well, the Shadow of B-E-A-L. Beal. Beal. I uh, said Beal. Yeah, keep going. Space Na, N-A. Beal Na. Beal Na. Blath. B Beal Na Blath. B L A T H. B L A T H. Yeah. Beal Nablath. How else? I don't know. Beal Nablath. Blath. <laughs> you sound like a sheep. Respond to us. How do you? <laughs> what is you. We gotta, we'll look it up after. That sounds crazy. But you continue. gotta give me a pass on that one. I'll give you a pass on it. I'll give you a pass. Which centers around his execution during Ireland's Civil War. Well, now okay. I know he dies. He's you didn't executed. Know that? I don't know much about him. <laughs> Other than Liam Neeson plays him. You call yourself a primordial fan? <laughs> Does, do they have a song about Michael Collins? It's like 15. <laughs> <laughs> Not on those two albums I love, right? Uh, I don't think so. I know. Do you have Redemption at the Puritan's Hand? There's a metal guy freaking out right yeah. now. Um, no, I don't have that one, I don't think. Oh, man. I have everything up to um, Gathering Wilderness, I think. No, you have Nameless Dead. Okay, I, mm -hmm. I thought Nameless Dead was next. So I have everything up to Nameless Dead oh, okay. and maybe the one after. Which is Redemption of the Puritans. Then I do have that. Oh, okay. the last song. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, both are on YouTube, so you can watch them gratis. All right. All the best. That means free. Billy. Yes. Free fucking gratis. Yeah. Okay. So. Do you like Babe? What? I was watching it not too long ago. Really? Great movie. What about Pig in the City? The the much maligned sequel. I never saw Babe 2 Pig in the City. Mm. Zephyrin Cockrum is in both of them. Yes. He's the farmer. <laughs> he won an Oscar. For Babe? Yeah. Is there Did much doing anything? Acting? <laughs> He's great in it. What does he do? He, he talks to a pig. He He's just, Father Daggett. He's does he great say, that'll do pig, and that's it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that'll he do won an pig. award for that'll do pig. That'll do. <laughs> Stretch Cunningham. <laughs> <laughs> all right so that's cool all right and we got one more email okay hello guys hey this is from brett shade so <laughs> it's, i love it it's a cool name the fake names <laughs> <laughs> he said hello guys first up brett shade is a bad name <laughs> No, it's not. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> it's a cool name. Well, I appreciate the thought it's cool. I've lived with it a long time. It definitely isn't. It definitely is. What I think this is, is I think Brett Shade is not a cool guy, and he's projecting it onto his name. He's like that Maybe. Asian kid from School of Rock. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah, cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, not cool. cool. No, you are. I think you you're are cool, Brett. Brett. Yeah. You're a cool guy. <laughs> <laughs> Second, I wondered if you guys had thought about doing theme picks for the show. You speak of my language, buddy. Uh, what, what, like what more months? I like in October you do horror movies. And uh, personally, I feel it would be fun and maybe more historically informative if you did themes around a few months. Right. Okay. If you do a month based around movies involving the ancient Greeks that are based on history or involving uh, World War II. So he, he doesn't care. If they're not involved, holiday, if they're holiday yeah. tie-ins. Like yes. do. everything's got to be a fucking holiday tie-in. Yeah, yeah. Brian, but, <laughs> Brian just, loves his holidays. You know what? I actually like this idea. Mm -hmm. You okay. want to do like a Greek month? We can I do a Greek cool month. That. I thought we. I think, I think like, we watched uh, all the Greek movies. Yeah, we, uh, there's more. We, we tie in watch. the connecting like events and stuff like that. that we makes can sense. hype up the fans with you know. Yeah. Coming up, yeah. our toga party month. Yeah. <laughs> Totally. We can, and we come with, with wacky names for them. Yeah. yeah. Like fucking, I don't know, Lupercalia November. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now I don't want to do it's it. It's going to be the Great Recession. <laughs> we do movies about economic hard times. <laughs> We're doing the Grapes of Wrath for the third time this month. Um, so when we lose all our subscribers. Yeah. He said, I think this could be different because it could it would also be able to bridge the timeline 
Start with the movie that took place first. The second movie can have a brief fill in of what else happened during that time and what mm-hmm. events mm-hmm. brings those events. Just a th- he wants it even more involved. Just a thought, <laughs> but I still enjoy the show. So he would right. have wanted us to do like the King and then yeah, John right. Or like right. we do the 9 11 movie and then we do like while well, they're fighting the war in Iraq. Like, like uh, that would be tie everything together. Yeah. Yeah. Celebrate an entire month watch. of 9 11. Yeah. It's 9 11. <laughs> <laughs> Never forget this month. Yes. What's the one where Nicolas Cage is like buried alive in the World Trade Center? I think that's just called like 9-11, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that might I be. never saw it. It's so, I refused um, to watch that when it came out. I felt so like exploited yeah. at the time. Yeah, it's kind of cheese. I think that was cheese. like 2005, too. It yeah, like it was like very way too soon. Mm-hmm. And then there was the United 93. Flight United 93, which I never saw. Yeah, that would be the first one that we got to watch. Honestly, every day. I saw that movie. I'm, it's just, good. I'm just like, why wasn't Mark Wahlberg on the flights? He could have right? saved us all. If Mar- Mark Wahlberg had his way, it would be a fucking beautiful world right now. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Whole, he could have changed the course of history. Yes. If he just caught that hey, flight. I threw a guy at a plane. <laughs> God damn it, Wahlberg. Do people know about that, That what he said? I feel like people do. You, you could well, we do it. have some uh, listeners that are not in this country. Yeah. Mark so Wahlberg maybe kind of, uh, famously yeah. said that if he was on the flight, that there never would have been a 9-11. He, he would, would have saved the day. He would have personally stopped the terrorists. Mm-hmm. So, you know. He wouldn't have got he killed. Shoot her. Yeah. yeah. He wouldn't have got He's killed. Max he would have stopped them. <laughs> He's Max Payne. <laughs> I never saw that. Max Payne? Not Is good. it bad? It wasn't good. No. Not good. I like the game. The game was like, it was like all about bullet time, right? Where yeah. Like you could free. Yeah. And- mm-hmm. That was the hot new thing because the Matrix had come out. And like, hey, we could put this in a game now. Do you remember the Matrix games? Yes. Yeah. They there were was an online terrible. version. There was an online version of the Matrix games. That was fantastic. Really? They made yeah. you play as like side characters. You could be the, the Asian guy or the black girl. Okay, yeah, yeah. I remember you were Jada Pinkett Smith. Yes. There was an app, there was a level where you had to go and fuck Chris Rock and then tell Will Smith about it and get him upset. And he harbors resentment for years. Did she fuck Chris Rock? Mm-hmm. I think that's a rumor, but there's also like uh she was just recently like she basically openly cucked Will Smith. Yeah. She does that all the time, yeah. That's her thing. Yeah. And then someone it. came out recently. Remember when she was a dancer? A romancer. A Capricorn? And she's Z-K. a cancer. No, um, in, in Independence oh, Day. Oh, Independence Day, Exotic. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's running with the... Buster! Yeah. Yes, Boomer. 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 Ah! <laughs> and she has the obviously fake baby rattling yeah. its head around its yeah. Now, um, as uh, our listeners said, they want some history. So, the Christmas album is dropped for us. Yay! It did. And it was... Supported by the listeners in a big bad way. Big bad big way. bad way? Why bad? Well, you know, like a big, big bad, like kick ass way. Is it the eighties? Is bad good? Yeah. When I say it, it is. Like, right. It's bad. This bad. Yeah. bad. You're bad. You know you bad. Yeah. Jamon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He a bad mama. Big bad way. Shut your right. mouth. Yeah, though they 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 did good. But it's time for us to support one of the listeners back. Okay. Because, Pay it forward. Pay yeah, it you forward, know what? Yeah. You guys may like us. But we love you like Kiss. Kiss loves you. Kiss loves <laughs> you. <laughs> you really kissed out today, too. Oh, He's yeah. kissed out every week. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> but one of our listeners has a new project out. Okay, cool. And we're, you know, we're going to help him. We're what kind of project? A uh, comic book. He has a Kickstarter. Kickstart my heart. Kickstart my comic. And we Whoa. got, and we got, yeah. Re- Kicks up my comic and I sell it now. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. Baby. <laughs> so if you're looking for the perfect holiday gift for that comic book and horror aficionado in your life, look no further. Tales from the Crypt, The Vault of Horror, and now Tales from Toxic Pond. But brought to Too much you- Tales from. Just right. saying, in the ad, maybe you cut Tales from the Crypt, because now we're saying Tales from a bunch of times. I don't know. You're correcting right. the copy of our listener? Yeah. This guy supports us. He's never corrected us. And you're going to correct his fucking ad? I'm going to correct it. Yeah, yeah. I didn't write, <laughs> I didn't write the copy. <laughs> fucking it's asshole. Trying to thought just now was like, am I going to be an asshole? Yeah, I'm going to be an asshole. <laughs> I am going to be an asshole. <laughs> 
Get rid of Tales I, I, from I, I, I'll the do, Crypt. I'll do Put something else. It's just uh, related stuff. Put something you, else. Do you like Tales from the Crypt? You'll like this. Do, do you the, like the Tales black, from- Change Tales from the Crypt to Black Mirror right now. All right, looking for the perfect holiday <laughs> gift for that comic book and horror aficionado in your life? Well, look no further. The show with the Crypt Keeper. The uh, Vault uh, of Horror. Yeah. Snoop Dogg's Hood of Horror. <laughs> and now, Tales from Toxic Pond. Isn't that better? What about Tales from Golden no. Pond? <laughs> On Golden <laughs> Pond? It's about metaphors. Yes. Are we now just changing this guy's art? Like, <laughs> we're changing his entire work. It's, it's about Clint it's Eastwood. no longer can, his. Can I put my film in your refrigerator? <laughs> I'm taking pictures of covered bridges. Oh, no, that's the bridges of Madison County. Yeah. <laughs> No, I'm is, called, all the guys about senior citizen romance. Uh, yeah. Uh, I've heard this oh new invention. God. It's Viagra. <laughs> all his stories Bob, are just about old yeah. people fucking yes. <laughs> on gold. <Yeah. laughs> Anthology series. Bo- starring Bob Dole as himself. <laughs> I'm Bob Dole. <laughs> I take dick pills. Very. <laughs> He's, like, He's drawing very explicit, <laughs> explicit scenes. He paid for this. <laughs> oh, sucker. <laughs> I love you, buddy. <laughs> you knew what you were getting into. <laughs> I did ask him. I was like, do you want us to do a straight ad read or do you want us to fuck around? He said, by all means, fuck around. Because <laughs> okay, so, Ant just came up with a whole new thing. Yeah. <laughs> Have fun drawing Bob Dole. <laughs> Tales from the Toxic yeah, Pond. Yeah, so, yeah, so this yeah. is, is brought it? to you by Space Chimp Comics, an indie comic book company hailing from Florida's Space Coast. Space Coast. Coast, Coast, Coast? Coast? Yeah. <laughs> he has sponsored their comics, Space wow. Coast. He was wow. great. Space That's Coast. That's right. There he is. There he is. Remember the Brack show? Brack show was yeah. brilliant. Someone yeah. left the cake out in the rain. I love you, baby. <laughs> Who is the 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 lava guy? Was that Moltar? Moltar. Yeah. Moldar. Moldar. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this comic is reminiscent of classic sci-fi and cosmic horror series such Ooh. as Twilight Zone. Nate Ga- Nate Gallery. <laughs> Just pictures about Nate. Guys, I, I like Nate. cosmic horror yeah. though. Uh, cosmic horror, like the Twilight Zone, Night Gallery. And the Peter Cushing led Amicus films like Asylum and From Beyond the Grave. Tales- you know what's yeah, okay? Another I'm going to criticize this copy again. Right. Sure, yeah, go ahead. Peter Peter Cushing led whatever he just said. Amicus films, right? He just wanted to show off that he knew that Peter Cushing was in there. There's no reason to say that. Well, maybe <laughs> maybe people will kind of or they've heard of it, you know, right. but they don't know what those films are. I'll be honest, I don't know the films Asylum and From Beyond the Grave. Mm-hmm. Do you? No, I know who Peter Cushing is. I guess you know what? You're good, you. You're good, you. Name recognition. Exactly. He and knew discovering he commercials. Knew as that we, we speak. wouldn't know what that was, but he said Peter Cushing because we like, oh, Peter Cushing. Oh, Grand Moff Tarkin. Okay, great. Exactly. And it's discovering how advertisements work live. Yep. <laughs> in, in real time. In real time. <laughs> <laughs> Tales from Toxic Pond is a horror anthology series. What about Tales from Topographical Oceans? What do you think of that album? <laughs> Static is a... Oh, no, no. That's yes. That's tiles. Tiles, yeah. Tales from Topographical Oceans yes. is a yes album. Yeah. The Revealing Science of God. Spectacular stuff, guys. Check it out. And also, Who paid us for the ad? <laughs> and also check out Tales from Toxic Pond. It's a horror anthology series with... Stan- did you get money from Yes and not tell us? Because that's... It's fucked up if you did. <laughs> Rick Wakeman's got a... He's writing Ant checks. Yes. <laughs> He's holding out on us. Tales from Toxic Pond is a horror anthology series with standalone stories centered around the mysterious, the supernatural, Toxic Pond. Issue number oh. one is now live on Kickstarter. Follow us on Instagram at Space Chimp Comics and back the project at kickstarter.com and search Tales from Toxic Pond number one. And we have our Kickstarter link for that in the in the uh, show notes. That's from Kickstart a listener. Look, this is a guy who was up at midnight yeah, on Black Friday buying our album the second it dropped. Uh, what a awesome. hero. So you got to support this guy. Yeah, He's a listener him. of ours. If you like us, you'll like him. He's a good buck. kid. He's a good egg. All right. Good guy. He got shot in the gut. <laughs> He's a good kid. <laughs> You're going to read his comic. You're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. 
Wait, take a second. <laughs> it's history time. I think we got some history to do. Okay. Yeah. I'll go first. Okay. Sure. Let me uh, pull this up. What what magical land of the past are you taking us to, Brian? Yeah, where are we going? I am taking you to the Caribbean. Whoa. Really? Yep. That's, now, you that's told us it had to, to be Christmas themed. This yeah. is, yeah. But the Caribbean isn't very Christmassy. It's tropical. What are you going to decorate a palm tree? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this is what got Kevin McAllister upset. Yes. What you, so, what yeah. Oh, talking? by the way, for if you want a theme episode, this is all Christmas and our picks are all holiday season related. Are well, they? Brian loves his holiday tie ins. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> all right. So the Baptist War. Are you guys familiar with this? I'm not. Baptist War? No. All right. So. Um, but war is definitely holiday themed. So obviously Jamaica is <laughs> a British colony. <laughs> yes. Um, what do you think of the Maroons? The, the color? color? No, the people. Who are the Maroons? You don't know about this? No. Right. I know they're, they're when people get left on islands. <laughs> All right. They're maroon. They're marooned, yeah. So you know like when Bugs Bunny is like, nah, what well, a maroon. maroon. Yeah. It's actually like a racial slur. Is it? Yeah. Who so, are they? Are they Jamaicans? Are they stupid? Yeah, they're like um Jamaicans that kind of freed themselves and assimilated the British culture. You must be Jamaican because you're Jamaican me crazy. <laughs> I think I go horny. Jamaican me horny. That's a pickup line I've heard. <laughs> is that uh, is that really a pickup line? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Has it yeah. worked? <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> I usually just get maced. Mm. But um, so this is the Baptist War. Okay. But who are the Maroons? The Maroons? They're Jamaicans who They're Jamaicans fled who and joined slaves. the English. They're freed slaves. They're freed slaves who now slaves. like work with the they're in British. English. Yeah, they're in the colony. How'd they get unslaved? They, they left. They kind of like freed themselves. It's a, it, it's a whole thing. They it's, walked down the block. Did they buy their own freedom? Because <laughs> we all know that the only slave revolt in history that was successful was in Haiti. Well, this is in like 1493, so it was oh, oh, it wasn't back. British, you know. Mm. We're they kind way of back. yeah, they worked their way free, and they lived in mountains mm. and stuff. And did they become the Rastafarians? I don't know. I don't know how the Rastafarians started. I I think they're actually fairly new. They worship uh, Bob Marley, the yeah. guy from Ethiopia, mm -hmm. Halle Salisi. Really? Yeah. They think like he was the second coming of Christ. You didn't know this? I don't know much about their religion other than like they have to have dreadlocks and smoke weed. They do definitely do that. Yeah. But ha Haile Selesi was like a, a emperor king guy in Ethiopia during the 1940s and 30s. Oh, okay. And they firmly believe he was Jesus Christ returned. And that's their religion. I don't know exactly the ins and outs of it, but that's part of it. It's interesting. That's weird. <laughs> interesting. It's, yeah, it's interesting. I, don't, I never heard that. It's almost like Jamaican Mormons. You know, Mormons think, uh, what's that guy? Was the second coming, basically. Jo Joseph, Joseph Smith. Smith. Till they, Joseph, Joseph Smith. Smith got talked to by God with the golden plates. Yeah. 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 We learned this. Yes. I got the golden plates. <laughs> but continue. All right. So um, the Maroons aren't super important to this, but obviously it's sure. a British colony. Um, Jamaica. Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And there's obviously missionaries and all this stuff. Mm. Eventually, there is a native Baptist preacher named Samuel Sharp. That's a good name. Known as Daddy Sharp. Daddy Sharp. Daddy. He's called Daddy. Come on. Was he played by uh, <laughs> Sean Bean in that series? <laughs> um, <laughs> like Sharp Travels, or whatever the fuck it's called, where he fights Napoleon. Do you know about this? <laughs> no. You don't know about this. It was just like a BBC show. This was a BBC like series in like the nineties where Sean Bean was like a rifleman in the 18 in like the Napoleonic era. And he would go around fighting the French. Whoa. Yeah. That's cool. I know Sean Bean when he went to Jamaica, he fell off a giant satellite and then the satellite crushed him. Was that in Jamaica? Yeah. Was it? Oh, no, I think they were in Cuba in the movie, right? Or they filmed it in Jamaica. They might, it might be cute. Cuba makes more sense to me. Maybe they filmed it in Jamaica. But yeah. Either way, yeah. The, uh, mm -hmm. the cradle. Yeah, the cradle. Exactly. <laughs> Franklin James? No. No, Alec. For me. For me. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the best villain deaths in all of Bond. It's one of the best movies ever. I know you love Golden. It's perfect. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> so, Daddy, um, you know, he you sees... sit on it, but you can't take it with you. He sees all his people kind of being slaves. Well, I mean, okay. they are slaves, not kind of. And on Christmas, 
1831, he's like, hey, let's rise up. He's Christmas start, he's rising. starting a revolt. Christmas rising. He goes, the British don't know how to fight on Christmas. Well, they don't know how to fight on Easter either. That's the Irish. <laughs> <laughs> you get them on the holidays. That's like, what you get yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> and he does a big, you know, uprising. There's battles, all this shit. It lasts for 10 days. Okay. Um, the British go to the Maroons, who are also black, and they use them to help put down this rebellion from wait is it like a racial thing like they're like half white or something you know like quadroons or something is that what it is let let me look up the maroons exactly um they descend from africans who freed themselves from slavery on the colony of jamaica and were established communities of free black people in the island's mountainous interior oh that's it just yeah yeah they just they're guys who just you know so the the british were like let's take these free dudes and stop this rebellion against the slaves yep and this and they put them down they eventually win it's like they were fighting in mountains you know there was it was real battles and shit yeah, yeah, yeah. with all the uh you know the the attacks um they put it down this is the event that really sparked the british colonies to eventually abolish slavery really hmm. yeah um so after the rebellion um 500 slaves were killed uh, after the rebellion, after the rebellion, that's a, actually that's really yeah. a lot. After the rebellion, three hundred and forty were um, were executed for like treason. Wow! Mm. So you have almost a thousand dead from the result of this. You know, reminds me of the Servile War. You know about the Servile War? What's that? It was the Spartacus, the Romans. Okay. They uh, the the slaves rose up and led an army. Spartacus was the leader. He was a gladiator. Mm-hmm. And after they got put down, they crucified all of them along the Appian Way leading into Rome for like miles and miles, just thousands, hundreds and thousands of crucifixes. Jesus. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> Oof. So after the war is over like and they won, <laughs> um, this is the amount of property damage that was occurred. Okay. At the time, it's like um, one million pounds, right? Right, but we're talking eighteen as of as right? of two thousand twenty one. That's the equivalent of one hundred twenty four million dollars in property damage that's from like lot. all these battles. That's a <clears> lot <throat> for a small uprising. Yep. Like one hundred, they probably burned like cash crops. They, yeah, yeah, exactly. And they just kept they, going. They mm-hmm. burnt more than a hundred places down. Forty sugar works. Yeah, you know, uh, a, the homes of like a hundred planters. Mm-hmm. Damn, and. You know, the missionaries after this were um, a lot of them were tarred and feathered or executed because oh, no. they were viewed as collaborators. Mm-hmm. Um, the the actual white people that died, I think it's like 12. It's like almost nobody comparatively. Mm-hmm. And after the after. Well, the thinking I would imagine is if you're living on an island where the slaves probably outnumber the masters. Yeah, they need to show. A terrible force in order to just instill constant fear in these people. Well, you yeah. that's you have to. Yeah. It's look, it's really hard to maintain like a population under your control right. that outnumbers you. Not to mention the Haitian thing was probably fresh in everybody's mind. That was like 20 years earlier mm-hmm. or something like that. If that, yeah. Yeah. We were talking about 1830s. Yeah. That was probably yeah, that was probably 20, 30 years ago. People know it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so and that was brutal. Like oh the Haitian War yeah they they massacred all the whites so yeah yeah (laughs) people want to put this shit down yeah yeah they want to put it down quickly and hard so Mm -hmm. as a result of this um you know you had a bunch of Brit like slaves that managed to escape this isn't very Christmassy not yet well the battle took place on Christmas (laughs) (laughs) the the revolt started on Christmas (laughs) Christmas miracle. I'm in the mood to celebrate. You are the best. You are the fucking best. Why? You always miss the mark. <laughs> I did. Ha- I do have one. This is like his spooky shit. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes the Christmas festivities. Yes. This is goodwill Man, towards men. Shit. The slave shit. revolts and hangings. Look how spooky the serial killer yeah. is. <laughs> Mine's, th- mine's not too far off. I pulled I pulled him today. Wow. I'm not going to lie. Okay. So anyway, last. anyway last. at the end of this, um, you know, 
the the slaves are slaves again, but it's not too long because in 1834 they start to, well 1833 they passed the uh the uh what is it slavery abolition act to get rid of slavery in the colonies mm -hmm. and by 1830 there is total freedom it's a happy ending yeah do you know what gift you could give to your family this holiday season um no the gift the gift that keeps love. on giving or something no i the think love. Yeah, i think you could give them the gift of you finally being mentally healthy and i think you could do that <laughs> Call me not because you're such a burden on everyone around yeah. you. You really are awful. I think I think if you went to betterhelp.com and wow. you finally got the help that I'm you need. <laughs> yeah. In fact, you could tell your family and go, I'm a burden. I can't tell you help. how many times my house has gotten phone calls at 4 a.m. from his wife screaming, please help. He's out of control. He wakes up and he holds he holds me down at knife point. <laughs> And I'm afraid. I'm afraid for my life and the life of our neighbors. And I really like, please, I'm asking you, you need to get help. It's not okay. It's a better help. <laughs> well, at least you guys are looking out for the betterment of myself and my mental health. So if, Thanks, guys. if you want to give someone the gift of mental health this season for yourself, you can go to betterhelp.com and finally get the help you need from home. You don't even have to leave. Right. Or Why maybe look at me or maybe <laughs> your problem, yeah, your maybe. problem. And it's time for you to take it, to be accountable for yeah. yourself and your actions. This is like an intervention. Get a discount. <laughs> exactly. You get a discount when you get click on promo code. Dude. Right. And look, maybe if there's someone in your family that's fucked up, you can you can buy this for them as like help. That's right. It's Better a great help. gift if they're fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if they need help, <laughs> you could use BetterHelp.com to get the online help that you need. Right. Online therapy. It's great. You don't have to leave your house. Yeah. It's helped Steve tremendously. Yeah. The violent. I know a lot of old people at knife point. <laughs> so nice. I do have another one that is kind of more Christmassy. No. Okay. No. <laughs> right. You had your chance. <laughs> you blew it. <laughs> no, that's, right. that's interesting though because I, I never it's heard of that. Yeah, it's, it's a good story. It's, it actually led to you know. Yeah, Daddy cool Sharp, stuff. Man. Daddy. See what he did? Daddy Sharp. Daddy Sharp. Do 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 do. Daddy Sharp. Daddy, <laughs> Daddy brought some. <laughs> Daddy's brought some freedom. What do you think of Daddy's skills? <laughs> God, I can't even explain. I can't explain that. No, I, can't I, want, I can't do that. Daddy, no. like, how do you think he did? He doesn't sound like he did very well. But it was <laughs> a lot of people. Died. But it was successful. No, it wasn't. In the end, it was not for them. Tell that no. to the guys that got hung. They sacrificed themselves. The martyrs to the cause. Yeah. All right. What do you, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm. He sounds most Christmassy. He Let's has a Christmas. Esque thing, I, I do have a Christmas esque thing. I have Let's something. I have something that is a Christmas miracle for Brian, and mainly you. I brought this for you. I brought a man. Okay. Uh, I love a man. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard of him. Uh, some people probably have. Nikolai Tesla. Cesescu. <laughs> Cesescu. 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 Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this. Do you know this guy? Yes. You know him? Yes. Okay. Do you know where he's from? He's a Romanian yeah. man. He's a dictator. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Bringing a dictator. Ceausescu. Ceausescu. Yes, Ceausescu. <laughs> I'm bringing a dictator for you. Okay. Have you heard of this man? No. All right. Let's start at his early life and what he became and what happened to him. Okay. And uh, it does tie into Christmas, believe it or not. He is three... He's the, he's, the third, <laughs> he's the third of nine children born to poverty in 1918. Okay. All right. So he's born in a chaotic time in the world, especially in that part of the world. He becomes the apprentice of a shoemaker in 1932, who was an active member of the Communist Party, which was illegal at the time in Romania. Okay. Because he's working with the shoemaker, he joins he the Communist Party. Is that yeah. who... Everyone knows yeah. all cobblers <laughs> are assisted by elves. Yeah. <laughs> you leave them out at night and elves come and finish the shoes. <laughs> We've all seen that cartoon. <laughs> so 1932, he becomes a member of the illegal Communist Party in Romania. Okay. 1933, he's arrested for fighting. 1934, he's arrested for collecting signatures. This guy gets arrested like five or six he's times party in the mid-30s. He's constantly in trouble. Right. 
And now he is labeled as a dangerous communist agitator mm-hmm. in Romania. Oh, not my type of guy. This guy. Not your type of guy, no. Not my guy. <laughs> not your guy. That's Christopher Walken. <laughs> He what spends. That? That I, no, I was doing Seinfeld actually. Uh, he spends a couple of years in jail until 1939. He also spends some times in internment camps from 1940 to 43 for conspiracy against the social order. Right. This guy's a Romania was part of the Axis powers. Uh, were um, they? Yes. Okay. So they were. They were fascist. Yeah. They were so, fascist, and he's going against fascism. Who is They're um, also Germany's main supplier of oil. So mm-hmm. well, who's uh, in charge? Are they like just like? Did they just ally themselves with the Nazis or they, were conquered? We're pretty much compelled by Hitler to join. Join us, mm-hmm. or I'm going to come in and make you join. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, but they, they, I think it was more willing on their part. They had designs on gaining territory in the Soviet Union and whatnot. So that's where this guy comes in. Mm-hmm. After World War II, a lot of Soviet influence starts reaching Romania. Okay. He becomes the secretary of the Union of the Communist Youth between 44 and 46. So communism is actually on the rise, and it's being really hammered in by the Soviet Union. Yeah, after the war, communists now are like, we can really spread our shit. Yeah. Well, they seize power in 47. Yeah. 47, yeah, well, Romania is now by Stalin. Yeah. Right. Well, here's the thing about this guy. He's elected member of the Great National Assembly. In 48, he's a Ministry of Agric- Agriculture. So he's r- going up in the ranks every the year. Ranks. Every year, he's something else. 49, Deputy Minister, and he's studying at Moscow's Soviet Military Academy. 65, he's now General Secretary. So over the course of, you know, 20 years, this guy was just a basic party member, and now he's in control of the whole party, Mm -hmm. right? He changes the name to the Communist Party, and now Romania is considered a socialist republic. But he wasn't completely communist. He started to make... He's he's been wasting his time all these years. Yeah. He starts challenging the Soviet Union because he wants Romania to be a world power. Right. And he starts making deals with the West because all his policies are just intended on them being the world power. They don't want to be reliant on any union. Yeah, he he wasn't like he didn't want to be a puppet. Guy. Nope. Yeah. No. Yeah. Now now I know who he is. You know who he is. Yeah. yeah. I he, don't him and exactly him and Joseph Tito, very similar dudes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tito's partisans. Yeah. <laughs> well, a little thing about this guy, he was really obsessed with social uh, economic liberalism. Okay. And he was also uh, so he's slightly free markets. He likes free markets, and he does deal, a deal with the West that actually bites him in the ass. But he Usually also does. <laughs> yeah, he also passed uh, probably some of the most extreme anti-abortion laws of the time. He hated abortions. He mm-hmm. was very like, no, you need to have kids. And like it turns out a bunch of orphans became like a thing. But uh, that yeah, caused there was some a, there problems. There was a group of them that became um, gymnasts. Yeah. And <laughs> they got loose in, in a town in Colorado. Five young girls and their grandmother, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's an episode nobody remembers. <laughs> it's not a bad episode. No, it's not. So That's the, you that, know the best part of that one the, is uh, Janarito, right? No. Um, yeah, it's the Elian Gonzalez episode. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No. Um, when Randy goes up to the girls, the, the grandmother dies, and then we're talking about South Park. Yeah, yeah. The grandmother dies, and then Randy goes, uh, "Hey, kids, they're all playing in the backyard." If you have a grandma, step forward. Yes. And then the girls go to someone and he goes, not so fast, girls. <laughs> so he he's actually not doing too bad. There's economic growth. There, there's good social freedoms coming with his, his stuff. So he's not too communist. He decides to borrow $13 billion from the West in 1968. How much? $13 billion. Okay. This is the like nail in the coffin for his rule, pretty much. Because if you know anything about, you know, societies that are socialist, once they get a lot of money, they tend to fall apart and spread their influence in the cor- incorrect ways. They don't know how to manage this. Corruption starts happening. People start stealing it. They start putting investments into things that don't work out. Mm. The people are getting angry because now... They they had this gigantic idea of being a world power, but they can't support it. So the people start suffering, and now they start rationing energy and food because things hey, aren't going well. It's also well, it's the, hard, money got, the money got embezzled it's communism. by fucking it's communism. Yes, the fat cats, yeah, the people in charge. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so over the next like twenty years, there's marches against them, protests are breaking out. He decides in 1987 a protest breaks out to put these motherfuckers down. He arrests a ton of them. He beats them. He 
tortures them. He does them. dictator shit. He does dictator shit and is now seen as a dictator. Mm-hmm. As this happens, he orders... Um, this is in the 80s, right? This is in 89 yeah. now. There's a demonstration as a political threat. He orders military forces to open fire on a bunch of people, and it causes a lot of deaths. So they're like, like, we got to get him out. Square shit. Yeah, we got to get him out. I'm pretty sure. Revolution starts happening. Maybe wrong. Yes. But I think his like presidential palace mm-hmm. is currently the largest building in the world. And uh, Google it. it's almost like completely empty. Really? Yeah. Like it's still standing. Like it, it's not not the tallest building in the world, but it's, it's the, the largest, largest building in the world. That makes sense because where do you think all that thirteen billion went? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it didn't go to the people. Right. <laughs> um, it says that Boeing's factory in Washington all right. is the world's I'm... largest building by volume. Oh, well, okay. largest palace. Well, look out! Look out! There's something like special about his. Build. It's massive, mm-hmm. and like they don't know what to do with it. The Palace of Parliament in Bucharest, Romania, is believed mm-hmm. to be the heaviest building in the, the world. The heaviest building in the world. I don't know what that means. Does that mean? A lot of, a lot of, a lot of big steel, steel doors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah I, what would the make fuck? it the heaviest? I don't know. <laughs> they, do they make it out of rocks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. How do you even weigh that? I don't know. <laughs> No. Dig the scale under. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want this building to be the biggest? Biggest? No. No. Heaviest. heaviest. Yes. <laughs> yes. Strong building. So heavy, only the devil can lift it. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway. So civil unrest starts happening because he's putting down all, all these people. He decides, him and his wife, Alina, try to flee the capital via helicopter, but they're captured by the military. There's a military coup, Uh, uh, and they're like, we're putting this guy on trial. He goes on trial for stealing government funds, Mm -hmm. for publicly executing people without trial, and for genocide. They pin him on genocide. No bodies were ever found. For ever. So they just say- They just say, yeah, he killed so many people. We're killing you and your wife. We're killing you and your wife. Yeah. Christmas Day, they bring him outside- the trial lasts two or three days. It's a sham trial. I don't think you guys He's not even convicted. The and they spirit just kill meaning him. of the holiday and the season. <laughs> him and his wife <laughs> are, executed, are on, executed Christmas Day. I think I think executing a dictator on Christmas is within. The- it was a Christmas <laughs> miracle for Romania. Yeah, they stopped being socialist like right after that. <laughs> Romania is like an interesting place. It sure, because yeah. it's like they got kind of, vampires. Yeah, they're kind of. That's what Transylvania. <laughs> now, what you was, could right? do. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure the, the viewers are seeing it. If you're not, if you're a listener, you can actually Google um, the execution photo. Yeah, it's actually them. You see them like a color photo, like almost HD because it's 89 um, of them standing against the wall, and you actually see them get hit. It's not gory. Yeah, like I'm prefacing this, mm-hmm. but you see the moment. It's like really like wow. I can't believe they caught that on film. Like it's crazy. My friend once dated a uh, gymnast from Romania. Really? Yeah, she won the silver medal in 1984. Really? Yeah. Well. They had a lot of sex, but God damn it! W- no, the the problem was because she, she's so flexible and was so good in the Olympics. He was expecting like amazing sex, mm-hmm. and it really wasn't. It was just normal. Yeah, it's and just, he had to keep going out with her, right? Like you know, because he kind of owed it to her. Same guy. He had a similar situation with a masseuse, right? <laughs> <laughs> Happens to him a lot. Yeah. Anyway. You know what, like, one of the worst parts of the holidays is? Uh, buying gifts. No. no. Having to use your phone to call relatives. Ugh. It is so annoying to have to dial those buttons and have to hold the phone in your head. You know what's better? Using Riverside from your laptop. You can send them a link and you can have a face-to-face <laughs> chat with beautiful 4K. You can, you can sit at a desk <laughs> and not move. <laughs> And just be stationary at that desk (laughs) and everyone can see everything going on behind you. Maybe you can sit in front of a bookcase and let everyone know what kind of uh, intellectual pursuits you've been going after. You know, look, I have I have um, the wit and wisdom by Al Gore. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. See, (laughs) wit and wisdom by Al Gore. Yeah. I'm well educated. Yeah. That's right. Because oh. I don't want to see it. 
because when I talk to my family in members, 4K, I want to see them in 4K. Yeah. <laughs> Not in person. <laughs> Riverside's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they don't lose your audio. They don't lose your audio. Everything yeah. will be preserved. You could even play back your whole call with the person. So you know what you could do? You could do your Christmas call. Right. Then you could call them back a week later and be like, why don't we just watch like our call together yeah. again? And we could relive it. The audio is so good. You record yourself with like Christmas messages and not speak to anyone. You could just. It's you know, the send best it. way to telecommunicate. Yeah. You're the best around. You are Riverside. We use it. We You're use the best it. around. We use it Riverside's for our show. got your back today. We use it for our show, and you know it's done good for us. <laughs> yep. So. Yeah, well, I think there's going to be a very big guest we'll have soon, and it'll probably be Riverside. Most likely. You know. Yeah. So there you go, Riverside. It's what you want for Christmas. Anthony, I guess it's my turn. What do you got for us? Some um, Christmas spirit stuff. Well, I feel like I'm not in line with the rest of the show because mine is kind of has jocularity and Christmas fun. And Good. Hijinks. I like that. Oh, we're ending on a high note. Yeah. Are you uh, going to bring a serial killer? <laughs> no. Um, December 24th. Okay. 1826. All right. Uh, the, Where are we? We are in the Military Academy at West Point here in New York oh, State. Oh, okay. okay. Sure. Um, the cadets of West Point want to have a Christmas party. All right. And they do. That's my story. Alcohol <laughs> is prohibited. Oh, uh, prohibition? Don't, they don't know. They just don't allow alcohol at West Point. Jankum? Know. Jankum. They make Jankum. What's Jankum? Do you know what Jankum is? Have you been like prison or something? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Jankum olive oil. <laughs> You've been to prison. <laughs> Jenkum is like it's like a drug people make from like human shit. Like I knew it. He went to prison, (laughs) and he's like, "Yeah, that's what they did." Yeah. Yeah. No, at West Point, yes, they were just making tub alcohol. (laughs) So a guy named Sam Roberts, no relation to the radio host, Uh, Samuel Roberts, and a couple of his buddies get together, Mm -hmm. and they go into town and they purchase. Two gallons of whiskey and two gallons of rum. It's not a lot for all of us. Gallons? Well, it's not everyone in West Point. Everyone in West Point is a party. It's them and their buddies. Okay. Right? So they are, uh, they sneak it back into the academy Mm -hmm. and they start having a party that night. Sounds like someone's asking for a court martial. Mm -hmm. Uh, So they also smuggle some food and everything. Did you ever sneak booze in somewhere? Sure. Who hasn't? Yeah. I remember the big thing to do in my day was uh, people would take the take a Poland spring bottle and fill mm-hmm. it with vodka. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember in high school, people would walk around drunk. Drunk, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that used you, to happen. You could put whiskey in an ST bottle, you know. <laughs> sure. You could mix it in. So it's nice. And I don't know why like you would it. want to. Like, you know, well, people are I stupid. I want to get drunk and go to school. <laughs> right? I think it's just like. Anything to deal with the horrors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 I remember one time we snuck a bunch of uh, Bud Lights into my basement, me and my friends, and watched Taxi Driver. Okay. And uh, That's my, cool. my dad yeah. came home from work and he comes downstairs and he sees us watching Taxi right at the beginning of the movie. Movie just started. And we were like, we just cracked open our beers. Mm-hmm. The lights were off. We were going to watch Taxi Driver. He comes down, he sees Taxi Driver's on. Oh, cool. He sits down and watches the whole fucking movie with us. So I had to hide the beers behind the for couch three hours. for like two hours That's and not so drink funny. them. Yeah, you should <laughs> drink them. That's <laughs> so funny. By the time you're ready, then piss walk. That's good. That's good. Uh, yeah, so they smuggle in all this booze. 10 p.m., a few dozen cadets gather in room number five of the North Barracks. Okay. And at 2 a.m., there is a noise complaint, and the sentry on duty goes and investigates. The and MP finds six singing cadets in the room, and he tells them to shut the fuck up, but he doesn't turn them in. Uh, oh, so he's a nice guy. Yeah, he's take like, it off with a warning. An hour later, a guy named Ethan Allen Hitchcock. That's some fucking that's name. That's a great name. Yeah. Jeez. He is a lecturer. He started a furniture store. He liberated Ticonderoga. Did he really? Uh, Ethan Allen did. Oh. Um, but uh, Ethan cool Allen Hitchcock, films. he's a lecturer on military tactics. He's one of the teachers. Okay. He is walking by and he hears some noise 
So he goes and investigates, and he sees six sma- completely smashed cadets Whoa, in the room. That's not good. And it's just, and even he is nice, and he's like, just go back to your rooms. Yeah. Right? And he goes back to his room. But the cadets now are in a fun mood. <laughs> no, fuck it, <laughs> fuck this party. guy. <laughs> so they get up, and they ring and run his door. <laughs> They, they start fucking with him. They start fucking with him. He's in bed. He was being And they nice. run up to his door and they bang on it real hard. And then he walks out <laughs> and they're gone. They do this three times. Well, he's, a little, <laughs> he's little assholes. One of them is like, I just read this new book by Dickens. I got a great idea. So Hitchcock is pissed now. So he goes and gets a lieutenant, like a real guy. Yeah. yeah. And he wants these guys arrested. So they go to the North Barracks, and rather than surrendering, Sam Roberts goes up to this lieutenant and punches him in the head. <laughs> Whoa! And knocks him unconscious. He punches. He punches. Holy he punches crap. one like a military officer and knocks him unconscious. And then they fire on Ethan Allen Hitchcock. <laughs> <laughs> they shoot at him. Yes. This escalates into a full scale riot. And all the drunks just start smashing shit. In West Point. Yes. And (laughs) they cause $4,000 worth of damage in 1826 money. So you can look at whatever that that is. Um, (laughs) At uh, Revelry, 6.05 in the morning, they're still fucking going bonkers. (laughs) And they have to call in the real army to come and put down the riot. (laughs) The cadets. Yeah. <laughs> These drunken yes. maniacs. Right. Oh my God. Uh, in the end, so there's an investigation and a trial. <laughs> okay. A trial. Yes. Uh, well, you have to. hundred. We sentence you. Shot someone. 167 people testified at this trial, giving information. So, like this. Wow. This was big. <laughs> it was massive. Uh, by the way, um, that's that's about 124 thousand dollars. There you go. <laughs> Holy crap. Right. So the investigation finds out. That 70 of the cadets participated in this riot. 19 of them are put on trial as like criminal shit. <laughs> um, Who's but, president? 1826. Is that Fillmore? Is that Quincy Adams? Hmm. Uh, 19 of them put on trial. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sorry. Nine, it's Quincy. They're all uh, the, of the 19. Those guys are expelled from the school. Okay. But some of them are allowed to come back. Mm-hmm. The most famous of the guys who was allowed to come back is, of course, Jefferson Davis, future president <laughs> of the Confederacy. I uh, swear one day <laughs> I will get a vent against this country, which has thrown my friends out of West Point. <laughs> Another guy uh, allowed to come back is John Campbell, who would later go on to be a Supreme Court justice. Wow. Yes. Yeah. And finally, good old Sam Roberts, who started the whole thing. He sent us to do radio with Jim (laughs) Norton. Knocked the guy out. He uh, was not allowed to come back. He was expelled and barred from ever joining the army again. However, he went south. (laughs) Joined the army. And in 1841, became the Secretary of State of the Republic of Texas. Wow. Oh, okay. This is like so he's important. This is just a Texas. riot of successful of people. just like <laughs> brilliant dudes. Yeah. Who's who? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's my story. That's the awesome. eggnog riot. That's awesome. It's called the eggnog yeah, riot. Yeah, they made egg they they put all that booze in eggnog. <laughs> what do you think of eggnog? <laughs> I've never had it. Really? Yeah. Wow. What about you? So I have a, a really good eggnog recipe that my family makes. We do a, a punch bowl of it. And we put vanilla ice cream in it okay, with rum and just scoop it out with cinnamon and nutmeg. Oh, it's so good. See, I, it's so I, good. I drink it. I, you know, I don't have booze or anything, so I yeah. take it right out of the thing. Yeah. We got to get some eggnog in one of yeah. these Christmas episodes for Ant Maybe try. the last sure. one that we do, I think uh, yeah. we'll, we'll bring it over for, for my pick. Yeah, let Ant try some eggnog. I'm down. You never had it, really? Yeah, I never had it. Damn. It always seemed gross. Like, eggy, uh, eggy drink. It's not, it's not eggy. Egg. Yeah, <laughs> it's not. No, no. It's and the name, name is terrible. Yeah, the name sounds bad. But it's, it's like a cinnamon it's cream. cream. Yeah, it's thing cream almost. Yeah, mm. but maybe there's like egg in it, but it's not. What you think. I do want to know though. Why did we as a society decide to just relegate it to one time a year? I don't know. 
Like it's never in stores. Is it cold? This. Do you drink it hot or cold? Cold. Cold. Yeah. You could. I think you could. You drink could it have warm, it like lukewarm. But, mm. Like some people heat it up. Cold and put is blues better. In it. Cold. Is I better. like it cold. Yeah, me too. You know what I like? Winter Jack. It's that oh. that stuff Jack Daniels mm. puts out. Yeah. You're supposed to heat up. Do you? How? What do you think about? So, well, maybe you don't like it. The coquit, the uh, coquitos. Nah, it's not. For me. Coquito. No. I don't think there's an S at the end. I mean the drink coquitos, yeah. like the coquito drink. Stop you. putting S's at the end. It's I'm gonna now I'm gonna, I'm gonna put S on every time. Coquitos. Multiple coquito. It's not like a fucking multiple coquito. <laughs> coquitos. Do you remember No, do you like coquito? Yeah, I've had it once or twice. It's, it's like, very tasty. It's similar. Yeah. To eggnog. Well, honestly. When we first started our old podcast years ago, yeah. like 2014. The Howard Carter. We don't talk about that. Yeah. But do you remember on like the third episode we decided to drink, I think Winter Jack. And Did I we? Got, and I got drunk on Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I do kind of remember yeah. that. I remember a picture of me like all fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't I giving a thumbs up? We yeah. were watching the Star Wars Christmas special. Our third episode was like oh, a Christmas yeah. episode. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> remember Thanks Killing? Great yeah. Movie by the, I love the killer it. Killer Turkey. Nice tits, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Thanksgiving's next week, guys. I'm excited. Oh, I can't wait. What are you having? Turkey, <laughs> gravy, mashed potatoes, <laughs> stuffing. Fuck, fuck you. Fuck you. On the way here. Fuck you. On the way here, Steve and I were betting if you would ask us how we celebrate How we celebrate Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> how do you celebrate Christmas? We you always have? ask us that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have? You got, yeah, do you, you guys do get a tree? Fishes? What do you do? Do you the fishes? Like, <laughs> do you decorate? <laughs> We we saved that for the Christmas episode. Yeah. yeah. I don't need to ask you right now. Yeah. <laughs> Giving away all the fucking all the, uh, yeah, all the, the hot fun, topics all the stuff fun. going on in there. You wanna know how we celebrate Christmas? And you guys asked me like I'm the asshole for trying to generate content <laughs> asking about Christmas on the Christmas episode. <laughs> fucking jerk off. <laughs> the fucking audacity of me to try to generate something. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you try to do your I job? Guess, I guess we're done for the day. Uh, did we did we hit an hour? Yeah, we hit an hour. Oh, okay. I, I hope I, I hope we've satisfied the Irish guy. We yes, didn't. I hope there we was didn't. enough history. I think this was chock full of history, but yeah. we didn't satisfy him. He'll his thirst will never be quenched. Well, it's pick episode time. Well, we got to pick. Yeah, I will go first. My pick will come out first. I, I forgot the name. What I, was I am do. going to pick. Uh, I believe it's called the Old Testament. Is that what we're the doing? The whole thing? We're doing the Old Testament? <laughs> to read it, yeah. The Book of Elijah? <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's called The Old Testament. Okay. Uh, it's a movie about the Maccabean Revolt, which obviously is the Maccabee base. Maccabean Medical The yeah. Cucumber. <laughs> what? Cucumba. Cucumba. Minerals, vitamin, great hydrator. <laughs> <laughs> so this is an Italian slash French uh, co-production wow. from 1963. This is going to be is really cheap available? and shitty. It's on Amazon Prime. Okay. I am looking forward to this. It's going to be a cheap, shitty, terrible movie. About the Maccabees. About the Maccabees. Okay. We're yeah. Getting, we're getting Jewish in here, finally. Well, uh, well, you know, we always have a lot of Christmas. Uh, yes. There's really no Maccabee movies because Mel Gibson was trying to make one as like his like apology movie to the Jews. <laughs> And he got too fucked up with the wife shit, and he wasn't able to put out the Maccabee movies. Oh, man. This is the only fucking Maccabee movie. Okay. <laughs> and it's been 50 years. We're due for a good one. All right. So sure. we're finally going to get a little Jew shit in you here. You going to wear a yarmulke? No, I don't wear a yarmulke. Oh, all right. I thought, I thought we could have a little fun. Can we? Are we allowed to? Or are <laughs> if we... you guys want, you can wear a yarmulke. <laughs> or is that like against the no. rules? Anybody can wear a yarmulke. Really, oh. all the reason. Do you know why people wear the yarmulke? Do you know what it represents? No, tell oh, us. Oh, it's to shut make up. Ben Shapiro us. happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's written in the book. Yeah. Yeah. You must appease Ben. <laughs> in two thousand years, there will be a Jew on YouTube. Who he speaks needs very you to fast. wear that hat. No, not Brian Rupert. <laughs> um, what? Why do they wear it? So the the reason for the yarmulke is it's a symbolic thing, and basically it just means that God is above you. Oh. And you're always supposed to wear it to recognize that I thought God it was to cover your bald spot. Right. God, God wants you to wear a hat. <laughs> Why does kids you know, good man? with God, yeah, remember that. You know. <laughs> can't, can't say what I want to say. I know, I know. I know. I'm don't, itching. Don't worry. don't worry, don't say it, don't say it. A little, little hint for it. Um, 
And what movie are you doing? Uh, I think I'm supposed to say The Crossing. Well, yours is coming out third. Oh. Why? Never mind. Oh, so it's my... Well, he's yeah. picking The Crossing. We'll get back to yeah. that in a minute. It doesn't matter the order. <laughs> it doesn't matter the order. I'm going right? to do The Crossing. The Crossing yeah. is about the crossing of the Delaware. I believe it's a TV movie. Yes, it is. <laughs> Jeff Daniels A&E. plays George Washington. That sounds yeah, I've That's... seen it once, and I really liked it, and here we go again. I can't All wait right. to see That's it. Cool. Yes. I uh, just finished that Washington biography I've been reading. Did you love it? I thought it was pretty great. Yeah. yeah. I got choked up reading that. Is that now? You yeah. got choked up from a uh, George Washington, Washington biography? biography? As he's as he's dying at the end, yeah. It's like uh, what what will become of Mount Vernon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like he's such a great man, man. Mm. Great I man, want man. to uh I want to do the man who invented Christmas. Have you ever seen it? I've never seen it. Have you? Okay, I've seen it. Did who you like the it? Man who I like it. Christ? <laughs> No, it's it's about making the Christmas Carol. Oh, it's Dickens. a movie about Dickens. Dickens. Yeah, it's about his life. So All I right, think that's, that's very f- Dickens for one day. <laughs> I think that's very fitting, right? Is I it, think it fits. Is it really like holiday life? Is, is it like it's how very I Christmassy? Christmassy yeah. All right, perfect. That's what I want. I like the movie a lot. Cool. I've never seen it. Well, we're gonna talk about his life, so it could be a good deep dive into Dickens, you know, his real story. I don't know much about him, so you don't know much about Dickens? Not his real life. Do I you know have about, a favorite you know, Dickens. I like um, the one where they kill baby bunnies. The Great Expectations. Yes. <laughs> there, 12 baby, baby bunnies. bunnies. <laughs> Me and you are the only people on earth that <laughs> love that episode. Do you like that yes, one? Yes, I like that episode. It's one of the three weirdos. <laughs> yes. yes. I've, I went down this YouTube hole recently of like South Park YouTube. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. There's so many channels just dedicated to talking, talking about, about South, South Park. Park. Yeah. And they all hate Pip <laughs> and that episode with a passion. Pip is great. Pip is great. Yeah. I love Pip. Yeah. So my wife, who didn't watch South Park growing up, just started like watching South Park no in the way. beginning. Really? And she'd never seen Pip before. Wow. She texted me the other day like, Pip is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like when they first see him. It's like, I'm going to spit in his eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Oh. She, liked, shot. she liked the one where... They're playing on the football team, and everybody has a helmet except Pip. And Pip, <laughs> Pip keeps asking Chef for a helmet. Yes, he's like, no, no, I'm sorry, Pip. We can't do that. <laughs> but, sir, there's a child not even here. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pip. We can't do that. Oh, that's right. Oh, man. That's so good. Fucking geniuses. <laughs> anyway. So we got uh, the Old Testament. Yes. Followed by the man who invented Christmas, and yes. then the crossing to close out December, and that's our Christmas theme. That's episode. the end of the year. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. That's 2023 that's it, in the man. motherfucking books. That's it. That's the full, the full thing right there, huh? Yeah. Full Monty. It's a full Monty. Is that our first full like year from? I think so, right? Calendar. No, year? no. It's oh, a, it's from, first January calendar, January. from January to January. January to January. Yeah, that's the first. That's the first year. Yeah. realistically. Yeah. And we're we're almost at 100 episodes, which is crazy to think about. Yeah. What are you gonna do for 100 episodes? You come in naked. I was just gonna ignore it and not even like act like it's anything. He's gonna come in with glasses that have one zero zero. Could on come it, in you know? naked, just so. like, <laughs> like New if Year's you Eve see glasses. Me naked, I mean, I'm glad to show you. That's for the Patreon. I don't yeah. want to see you. Yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> Maybe just a little. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's little. <laughs> you know, by the time this drops, you might be uh, a resident of my great state. That's true. How excited are you to not have to drive half an hour like to the to the show? To the show? Yeah. Now, that's the least of my, you know, worries oh, okay. as far as reasons to <laughs> I, I wasn't moving so I could get to the show. I know it wasn't <laughs> I know that wasn't the reason. Yeah. But it was a big part of it. But it know? is like, nice, right? Yes. I am looking forward to to the big move. Oh, yes. God damn it. Yeah, you're going to be the last yeah. holdout. I'm out soon too, so whatever. Yeah. But it's sad. Think. It's sad. We're leaving the greatest place on earth. Staten mm-hmm. Island. Yes. Mm-hmm. Somebody actually asked a question, um, I think in an email or, or a comment. A about, YouTube comment. A right? YouTube comment asking for you to drive around Staten Island and tell them about the history of it, like the dark history, what you found in those woods. Oh. Yeah. And I think maybe I we'll, just maybe recently we'll do that. found another one. I told you. Yeah. You said yeah. That was messed up. Yeah. I don't want to talk about it just in case they hear us, you know? Yeah, don't know. But it's funny the guy mentioned that because we almost last year it kind of blew up at the last minute because of my pregnant wife. Yeah, but we were gonna do a Staten Island mm-hmm. documentary. I still want to do that, mm. and I still think. Yeah, we comment can. comment on it if you want us to do that. Full Staten Island documentary. Give us a little thumbs up. Be like, hey, tell us about SI. We'll tell you where the girls put out. 
<laughs> That's the one thing we'll focus on. You yeah. know, it's high time that you come clean with that. Yeah, you should. What do you mean? I mean, it gets referenced Just enough. We could talk about it. I can't play it, obviously. Yeah. Dude, do you know? I like think of my job. I can't. Your job? You might Brian, go to jail. Brian, <laughs> Brian has a rap album that he made when he was a teenager. And yeah. it's fucking masterful. <laughs> All right. It's quoted. Yeah. Anyway, can we leave. Yeah, we can go. Yep. All right. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Tell your friends. Buy the Christmas album. Donate to us. Buy some shirts. Buy some merch. We're going to try to help some kids. Be kind. Rewind. Do, be kind. Review rewind. History Pod Limited Edition. Limited Edition. Christmas yeah. shirt. Yeah. It's gone in like three weeks. Yeah. Your last yeah. chance. Some people to got ever it. Get that. Some, some people, people got did. It. Yeah. Yep. Those people are, you know, they get they, it as a gift heroes, for a loved one. They know it's there. It's a collectible you're gonna want. Yes, and one day, do you have a loved one? Mm-hmm. I bet they would love this shirt. Yeah, my wife laments the shirt so much. The shirt is hideous. I think most people lament it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the shirt like is it? absolutely grotesque. Well, it's an ugly Christmas sweater. <laughs> Legit ugly. <laughs> it's very, what don't uh, you like about it? It's not I don't like it. It's funny. Yeah. It's very funny. <laughs> but it's wearing it takes balls. Yeah, you gotta be a psychopath to wear that. You I gotta want- be you gotta be an Irishman who's mad who's listening to a reviewing movie show <laughs> and mad that they're reviewing movies. That's the level of guy you gotta be to wear that sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go gamble. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go to Lang City now. Yeah, you want to come? See you guys later. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. Thank you guys so much for listening and are watching. Thank you to Tom, Steve, Dave, Brywall, Q, Getham, Landers, Record, down in the studio. Thank you all so much for listening and or watching. We greatly appreciate it. Please like and subscribe. Click the bell to get notifications on everything we do. Go to the website, reviewinghistorypod.com to get merch. You can send us an email, reviewinghistorypod at gmail.com. You can give us a five-star review on Apple iTunes podcast. Apple, sorry, that Give us a five-star review on Apple iTunes or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all that stuff. It helps potential sponsors find the show. Um... Follow me personally on all social media at Brian Rupert. That's with two P's. Follow me on Letterboxd. I rank or review every single movie I watch, even the ones in my personal life. Please, guys, go to Bandcamp.com and buy the Christmas album if you have not done so. I know you're probably sick of hearing about it. There's only three weeks left. So thank you guys so much. What's up, Gadam? You're looking. Just waiting to come in? All right. Uh, Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.